much. I'm telling you, man, it's like playing a survival horror game with these content creators. Man, this game, bro, they write it to 3 It's because of Xbox Game Pass. <laughs> what are you crying for, to man? explain to you throughout this video. And you got a whole YouTube check, man. You trying to tell me you can't afford a little bit of two ninety nine? I mean, what are you talking about? This is a service that you don't even use, right? I mean, don't you buy your games, man. Don't you got a grown man system that you stand behind and you're back? So why are you worried about a subscription service if you buy all your games? Like, that's something that, that you people don't understand, man. You're not obligated to have to subscribe to Game Pass Ultimate. But see, the reason as to why they think it's an obligation, because it's the best value in video gaming and entertainment. So they're like, well, I mean, yeah, but you might as well subscribe because it's such a great value. That's the only reason as to why they're saying it, man. Like, this is ridiculous, bro. Y'all don't be saying this for any other company subscription service like Nintendo or Sony even. You only use this logic against Microsoft saying that it's 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 necessary. Why I believe that Xbox Game Pass is actually leading to the death of Xbox as Here a brand. And you guys why- will just try to find any excuse just so you can make the Xbox platform look bad in comparison and to be honest with you, Microsoft is making that money, man. As much as you people hate it, didn't you talk about how they went from two trillion to three trillion dollars? It don't look like Microsoft is going anywhere. It's coming so extremely soon. Hi, hope yeah. Didn't happy. you say you said it was six months, right? Six months, then they wouldn't drop a, another reiteration of the console. So right there, you've already been checked in that regard, and you really don't think Microsoft's gonna last even six months, even though they got games planned, planning out next year. Man, you know what, man? Go ahead. Have a great day. If you could, please. Give- yeah, whatever. I'll just say, <laughs> is that I have seen a lot of Xbox people saying, okay, well, PlayStation Plus is also getting more expensive and nobody's talking about that. Mm-hmm. Well, this is funny for two reasons. Uh-oh. First off, yeah, this sucks as well. I talked about it. I've made multiple videos about it. No, the- you didn't. You made probably one video, bro. When it's Microsoft, you get like three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different videos, bro. You probably only made one video of this. And just because you talked about it, you didn't speak about it in the same light as what you're doing with Microsoft. You didn't sit there and say, if Sony keeps doing this, they're going under. You never said things like that. You never said, like, this is what I'm trying to say. tell you. Your videos are not consistent. We can clearly see that there's an inherent bias in how you deliver your videos. PlayStation Plus price increase because, A, PlayStation Plus was already too expensive. Now it's even more expensive. And, B, it's And it's more expensive for providing absolutely nothing. It's the same exact service that you had before, and it raised the price. Now, I can, I can understand that you guys can criticize the Xbox game pass ultimate. Right. In that regard, considering that that was what we was paying for. Well, I'm not paying for it, but for the Xbox community, that's what they was paying for. What, seventeen dollars a month? Now it's 20. But now we know that it's it's a guarantee to have a lot of these Activision Blizzard King games coming to the subscription service, which means there's an added catalog of games. It makes sense. Just like with the Nintendo subscription service, how you only get access to the Super Nintendo and NES. You got to pay $50 to get access to the N64 titles as well as the, the Game Boy games. You know, clearly we notice that if you add more games to a catalog of something, the price increases. People say no one's talking about this when in fact this is an article of people talking about this, but... I do think it's funny that the difference is the fact that Sony has always said that PlayStation Plus Premium or any tier of PlayStation Plus is, in fact, optional. You know, oh, you're what? still going to have to buy your games. They're not you know, what saying. Are you, what are you talking about, man? And it's completely optional on Xbox. You don't have to go out there and support Game Pass Ultimate. I could choose the Xbox Game Pass Core, $75, and choose to pick and select, which I kind of do already, and choose and select and buy the games that you want. It is an option. What are you talking about, man? And the funny thing is, I want, and I also want to bring this up. For all the people say, oh, PlayStation is not, it's not an obligation. What do you mean? Yes, it is. Huh? What you talking about? If I want to continue to play Uncharted 4 online, what I got to do? 
pay for a subscription service. If I want to continue to play the Call of Duties and the NBA 2Ks and the FIFAs and the Maddens, what do you got to do? You got to pay for what? A subscription service to play it. So when you sit there and tell people that it's not, it's not, a, it's not obligated to have to support that on PlayStation, you're lying because that's where Sony makes most of their money. What are you talking about, man? For you guys to have the ability to play your favorite games online. That's where Sony, Microsoft, getting a, even Nintendo now at this point, is getting a lot of their concurrent money. Day and date, they're not giving you any sort of discount. The idea has always What are you been- talking about, man? No discounts, bro? I've seen discounts on plays, bro. I've seen $299, $399, bro. And the reason, and this is the reason as to why Microsoft can afford to do the higher price tag because a lot of the games that they're adding day and date happen are going to be happening to be dropping at 60 or 70 dollars at launch now people's like well sony got a plethora sony got more games matter of fact than the xbox game pass all your xbox guys has got his day ones but see but you're not understanding a lot of those games that are on the playstation subscription service they're like 299 i've seen them 399 four dollars so there would be to me they would really they would be really no point to subscribe to playstation premium because at least with xbox you are saving money because these are new releases dropping exclusively through your game pass ultimate that you can pick up day one you get what i'm saying not this shovelware sony when i add oh, okay that's a five-year-old game uh let's it's 299 in the store and then playstation is out here charging 160 dollars for the premium like, you get what I'm saying? Like, how is that even a bargain, bro? Just settle for the the PlayStation Core, and there you go. You know what I mean? Like, you guys are just hating that Microsoft is providing better options than what you're getting with Sony. Then that you buy the games you want to buy on PlayStation, which is why they actually make money, but more on that in a bit. There we go. And you see? It's the type of language you use. What do you mean PlayStation is actually making money? Like, I'm tired of going through these lists of games, man. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Forspoken, Foam Stars, Helldivers 2 lost 90% of its population, Rise of Ramen Noodles. All these games flopped, and let's not forget Stellar Blade at 1 million sales. It's so funny that you PlayStation fanboys keep bragging about how many consoles you outsold over the competition, then explain to me as to why Stellar Blade only sold 1 million if you guys go out there and buy exclusives. And then the other part of it is the fact that PlayStation Plus is just for cloud saves. If you want their indies and stuff like that for PlayStation Plus Extra, this has always been an optional service. Wrong! 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 Because you have to have PlayStation Plus to do what, guys? What important thing do you need PlayStation Plus to to play online? Are you going to completely forget that? Are you going to completely forget that people play NBA 2K, Call of Duty? You know, uh, they play a lot of these online multiplayer games. We're not talking about these free-to-plays now. We're talking about these third-party games that you PlayStation fanboys love. FIFA, you have to pay to play those games online. So would you go as far to say that it's an, that it's ob- that you're obligated to subscribe to PlayStation Plus to play your favorite games online? That's that's why I'm trying. That's why I'm so confused because you're using this as an argument against Xbox owners, but that same argument can apply to PlayStation. So if you don't if you don't pay for PlayStation Plus, you don't get access to that Call of Duty multiplayer. When it comes to Game Pass, for Microsoft, they essentially imply that this is mandatory. You know, do you? No, want the- it's not, bro. Like that's what you fanboys want people to think. Bro, this bro, if I can go out there and buy these games for seventy dollars, then do it. It's so funny that you guys are mad because Microsoft is providing an option for their consumers. Like this is not anti-consumer. If you don't want to support it, don't buy it. You can still consume the games the way you want to consume them. If you want to go buy Perfect Dark and spend all this money on all these games, by all means, go do it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to sit there and stand for all this unnecessary hate because, like I said before, this same logic can also apply to PlayStation. These games play day one with Game Pass when what they actually mean now is get Game Pass Ultimate or you don't get anything. Now, a lot of people are basically pointing out the fact that it is weird that they're calling this Game Pass Standard when it doesn't actually have day one games. I think that they're changing the status quo. 
I think very soon they're going to start to make it so that you're supposed to think about you buying Xbox games because they definitely need your cash. And then there's... See, what, you know what's so funny about you people, man? You guys keep saying that Microsoft is not getting cash because people spend $20 or whatever the case is on Game Pass Ultimate. Guys, your Game Pass is not free. This is something you have to pay for. This is something you have to. I, I don't understand. Like I'm, I don't understand this logic that you people keep saying. Oh, Game Pass Ultimate, you know, gets no money when you have to pay for the subscription service. Matter of fact, even Sony fanboys have said, "Man, Microsoft is suckering you fools, man." Well, I guess Microsoft's making more money suckering people for twenty dollars a month than if they just went out there and bought the game anyway. It's so crazy that you guys want to sit there and talk about, oh, it's more profitable to sell the game for $60, $70 when most people don't buy games anyway than it is for somebody or casual, hardcore, or whoever it is to subscribe 20 Think about it. Three months, that's about $170 game. Another three months of Game Pass Ultimate, that's another $70, $80, well, $70 game. Another three months, bro, they cover, bro. Like, and, and then on top of that, you don't even own the game. That's four games that people would have more likely didn't play, and they played it because they have access to Game Pass Ultimate. Microsoft made more money pushing the game through a subscription service than if they outright sold you the game. Y'all like, huh? Oh, that's crazy. You know, three months, 20, three months, hold on, 70, that's about three months. Well, it's a little bit over because it would go to 80, right? No, no, I'm 60, I'm sorry. That would be four months. So four times, three. okay, there you go. See, that's four games. Man, I don't know, man. The separate, much more expensive tier if you want the Game Pass Ultimate Day One games. It's currently twenty dollars here in America. It's going to be twenty three dollars in Canada. I think Game Pass Ultimate is going to go up to thirty bucks pretty soon. After yeah, that's that's what you want. And you know what? I, I don't care, man. My, Microsoft, please go acquire Square and Sega. Acquire all these companies because that that I don't care. Go ahead. I buy my games anyway. Go ahead. Acquire. Oh, it's gonna raise up the price. I don't, bro. Bring them on. Bring them on, baby. Bring Sega. Bring all all them game Atlas. Bring them all. You know, because you're not gonna sit there and try to take my hype and excitement from what I'm doing on Xbox. Because oh, they raising the price because they got more accuracy. No, 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 no. We ain't going that, bro. Bring them all, Microsoft. Raise it up as high as you can, baby. Come on. Get Sega, get Square, get all of them, baby. Add them all to the subscription service so they can raise the price and you fanboys are going to be doing the same thing while you have absolutely nothing. And make sure you drop them day and date on that Game Pass Ultimate, too, up for $30. This. So the weirdest part about this is that the confusion of this. A lot of people, even Xbox journalists like Tom Warren here. Well, half are, these people don't even play games, bro. If you got a blue check mark on Twitter, you don't play games. End of. Essentially saying... Okay, this is confusing. And honestly, I've talked about this in previous videos. I think confusion is the death of any brand. Uh, the fact that yeah, you start... Yeah, the, the, yeah, you're right, though, Dreamcast guy, because look at the confu confusion of Sony. You know, I mean, it's crazy that you guys support more Xbox games than you do your own titles. And I mean, the confusion that's going on with people supporting the PlayStation for all the wrong reasons and they're not supporting it for their own exclusive software is definitely not the Sony that I remember. You know, matter of fact, I go as far to say, where's Last of Us Part 3? There's a lot of confusion going on with Sony if they're going to keep doing these remasters and remakes and cross-generation titles. To have multiple tiers, different payment methods. The fact that there's something called Xbox Core, Xbox Console, Xbox Standards, Xbox Live, Xbox Gold, Xbox Game Pass, Ultimate, Console, PC. Uh, okay, my point is the fact that if you're a normie, like you guys, y'all are hardcore gamers. You're sit. You guys notice I didn't even say anything, right? Bruh, bruh, nobody that watches your channel is a hardcore gamer. What are you talking about, bro? I'm a hardcore gamer. I am. But even then, that doesn't apply anymore because, bro, we, see, you, you see, I already told you guys, bruh, you guys is gone. Like, I will say one thing, Dark Dark 1985, I apologize to this dude because, yes, and this, I'm going to speak volumes on this, when he said there's no such thing as a hardcore gamer. Now, most hardcore gamers stood up and said, what are you talking about? You don't know what you're talking about, but he's true. There's no such thing as a hardcore gamer in this gaming demographic. 
Okay. Sometimes casuals can say smart things too. And that's the point that I'm trying to make here with this video. You guys don't matter. I don't matter. Like, it's so funny. You call yourself a hardcore gamer, but when was the last time you talked about the Dreamcast, but yet you always want to represent it on your head in every single video? I think you're watching a video of me talking about video games. No, no, no. Hardcore gamers don't talk. Nah, 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 bro. We play games, man. What you talking about, bro? Oh, I'm a hardcore gamer because I spent more time talking on Twitter and talking to my gaming buddies than actually playing games. You hear this dude? Oh, I'm a hardcore gamer because I talk about games, man, but you don't play them. These points were probably the most hardcore of hardcore demographics, but. No, you're not, bro. I challenge you to a game right now, and I bet you run for the hills. Play me, boy. I know you watch my videos. Play me in a game right now. You will not. There you go. You're not a hardcore gamer. You claim to be such a hardcore gamer, but you never want to address me in one of my videos and be like, oh, I'm going to challenge this dude to shut him up. No, you don't do that because you run. You run for the hills because you know you can't win. I already know this, bro. The thing is that not a hardcore normal gamer. people are not going to understand this. If you're normal people are going to understand it because this is who it's appealing to. That's why you have a problem with it. The normies are not the ones having the issue with this. It's the whole cool gamers that remind, that have been playing the, since the AES Sega Genesis. That's why you guys are having these topics. Them, them normies ain't talking about this. They don't care. All they do is consume product. <laughs> Xbox games. If you keep subscribing to Game Pass, you are allowed access to them. But at any point, you can just lose it if you don't keep paying for the games you want to continue to play. What are you talking about, bro? So if I don't subscribe to Netflix, I lose access to all my movies. Okay, let me resubscribe. Oh, there you go. I have access to all my things again. See, that's all this is coming down to. You don't like the fact that gamers can choose and select and play the games the way they want. Because everybody wants to sit there and say, Game Pass Ultimate, you make, you make, or not, well, I wouldn't even say makes no money. Because that, that argument is mute, right? They, they say stuff like, oh, it's not saving money. Okay, let's say if a guy has his wife and the kids, and he has two Xboxes in his home. So you're recommending that person to spend $70 on two versions of the games, which would be $140, close to $150, than if they just bought the game through the Game Pass Ultimate? Think about it. Think about what I just said. Think about what I just said, because I know a lot of people that share Game Pass Ultimate with their kids, their siblings, cousins, nephews, whatever have you, and they all can play these day-to-day -day games with each other just by sharing the subscription service off one member, okay? And matter of fact, I probably think that's another reason as to why the subscription numbers are not as high because a lot of people that use Game Pass Ultimate normally share it with two people, normally, that I know. You know what I'm saying? I even share it with family. So there you go. There's the great, great value. I don't. That's why I told people I don't pay for it because we share it. You see what I'm saying? So that this is what you're not understanding. A lot of people do that. A lot of people do that nowadays, man. And what's crazy, it's not feasible to pick up two $70 games for you and your wife to play whatever PS5, Xbox Series X, and then pick up another two games. That's another $150. That's $300 right there, bro, for two games that are exactly the same. Game Pass Ultimate gives you that on top of access to all the other games in the catalog to the point where you don't have to buy anything. That's the privilege of it if you choose to. You don't have to actually buy anything. You get all these games and don't even have to buy them. You don't even have to buy none of them. And on top of that, you can share it. Like, when Xbox Series X came out, it was 100 pounds to get Xbox Game Pass for an entire year. Now that same library of games is... Oh, my God. Now the same library and access... Well, I remember getting Xbox Live Gold for 12 months for, for $60. Things change. I'm going to crap it here so you don't accidentally see it but people are pointing out that literally just last year xbox said they're not going to increase the price of game pass a price increase i don't believe articles i believe it from the horse's mouth if i didn't hear phil spencer or anybody else actually say it out of their mouth then it's hearsay and i i think this tweet is great liam here is a thousand percent correct if you look at the sales of anything on Xbox, they are unbelievable. I have a huge, huge collection. I have hundreds of PS4 and PS5 games. Yeah, well, what about them hundreds of Dreamcast games? 
You claim to be. And the funny thing is, a lot of those games that you picked up, bro, you probably picked them up at a discount, bro. Those games is not worth anything, bro. This is like one fifth of my PlayStation 5 collection. My point here is the fact that, like, I'm not trying to brag. It's that people buy games on those consoles. Wrong. People buy these games when they discount it. People buy these games for the value that they think that they were. People don't single-handedly pick up a full-price game for $70 anymore. There's only a few exceptions that I know. They'll do, they'll do it well. Assassin's Creed is having some controversy, but they'll do it for Assassin's Creed. They'll do it for Grand Theft Auto 6. They'll do it for an NBA 2K. But the days of picking up a game for your platform due to exclusivity, those days is over. Man, I go as far to say I think Xbox has more weight in that regard because even though people don't like Gears of War, there's some diehard Gears of War fans. Even though the fan base is not as big as it used to be, but there's some people that'll be like, man, I'll pick up that Gears E-Day, even if it's on Game Pass, because they got the diehard, audience, diehard audience. Same thing with um with Halo. It has a diehard audience. It may be, I wouldn't even say it's niche, but it's not as popular as the Call of Duties and the Fall Guys, but it's still up there. It's still enough to be relevant, like, unlike Sony games like SOCOM and Killzone, which happen to be dead. This is thousands of dollars of... That's pre- not $1,000 worth in your hand. That is not $1,000 worth in your hand, bro. You picked up like 10 games, bro. Profit of spending of investment into future games. Like, that's how these studios think of it. Okay. And if you buy Game Pass, you're investing to more games going to the catalog. Why do you think there's more games at, being added to the catalog? We put a game on play. Why do you think by because people have invested their money with the Game Pass Ultimate from before as to why they raised the price tag and are adding more games to it? Because I because they invested their money towards a subscription service. PlayStation, they bought it, they pre-ordered it, they got DLC, they kept playing it, they kept engaging with it. Whereas with Game Pass, no, it- how, no, 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 no. I'm gonna call you out on that. That's that's nonsense. Because how can you continue to be engaged with a company in a game after you've already purchased it? Matter of fact, Microsoft's approach is better because think about it. When you play the game, you're constantly always thinking about that Game Pass. You're constantly always locked into that Game Pass Ultimate. So they have a part of you. Every time you decide to pay $20 a month, they got you. You see what I'm saying? You're you're locked to you're locked to where they want you to buy game uh to support games. Unlike PlayStation, you pay seventy dollars for the game, or if you buy the game used, Sony gets no engagement. You beat the game, you shelf it, you put it on the shelf, and then you look at your platinum trophy. That's the problem with PlayStation. Yeah, they might have got your money at first, but they're not getting your money concurrently. Once you buy the game, you bought it. Like you get what I'm saying, guys? Unlike Microsoft. If you subscribe, they're always going to get that money off you. So every time you want to play Gears E Day, Call of Duty, all these games at once, they they're getting that money every month. So all these oh we bought well pick God of War Ragnarok seventy bucks. Okay, Microsoft just made that in like close to three months for selling their games for twenty dollars, as well as providing their consumers with more games to play than just one. If anything, I think it's proving to people, hey. Don't even worry about it. You don't have to actually buy these games because... And you don't have to actually... Like, hold on, what? They'll come to Game Pass or you don't even have to worry about owning it. This well, is... Why does that hurt you? Why do, Why does that matter so much to you? Why does it matter? Then you should have a problem with digital gaming then. See, this is the funny... And didn't you support a lot of digital games? You supported a lot of digital games and you want to sit there and talk about ownership? Man, ain't nobody want to hear this nonsense from you. Are you serious? You bought a whole, you bought a PlayStation portal that's nothing but a digital device with no with, with no ownership on it, and you want to sit there and talk about ownership after you said I bought I got hundreds of digital games, and on top of it, people say, oh well, Gabe, so he's he's not a culture game, he plays on P. That's even worse. How are you gonna be a PC gamer complaining about this buying games digitally? Bro, I'm telling you, man, this dude, bro, yo, y'all don't want to see it, but it's okay. So bizarre to me because the amount of people that are defending it is so bizarre to me. Everything on day one was a nice roll when they had no games, but it couldn't last forever without a price hike. This is the biggest thing, which is that Xbox is finally ramping up for years and years and years. They've said, next generation, next generation, we're finally catching our stride. It is finally happening. Releasing games like oh. Avowed. Uh, and, and that's why you guys are hurt. 
releasing things like Starfield's DLC after buying Bethesda and stuff like that. These are incredibly expensive projects. So I understand why they're increasing the price. My point is the fact that this definitely works. Everything on day one was much more functional before they started to invest billions and billions of dollars into well, the Well, keep investing into my Game Pass Ultimate because like I said, man, with that that the games. Like I said, this guy says everything was day one was a nice rule when they had no games, but it really really couldn't last forever without a price. Like, hey, man, I'll take this over what Microsoft was doing for the $17 a month because now they got a subscription service actually worth paying for. I don't care what you have to say. I don't care. I don't care because for, for all the people that are out there, $17 for the lack of games compared to $20 a month, with games coming out, I think I'm going to take the $20 with games. Well, it's anti-consumer. Everything y'all do in life is anti-consumer. Cut it out. Do you go to the supermarket complain about the, the, the pork chops because they, they used to be cheaper? Do you go to the supermarket complain about how the milk used to be way more and the eggs used to be? No, you don't. You consume product because you know if you don't, you ain't going to get access to it. The end system. Now they're trying to find a way to turn a profit. In fact, it's even funny. Sarah Bond, the head of Xbox in May 2024, talks about the fact that everything is coming to Game Pass Day 1. It is so funny to... Wow. People get mad when you're right too soon. I have been speaking out against a lot of these acquisitions. I, I of course. Tons and tons of... Well, of course, because it makes Microsoft more of a monopoly. Tons of videos on this channel talking about the fact that I just don't think a lot of these acquisitions are good. That's wrong, because you wanted, you wanted Sony to be bought out by Square. So that's, that right there shows you, shows you his hypocrisy. And I think it's the fact that Microsoft has bought so much and, and not gotten much for it. I think that Microsoft kept thinking that they could just buy their way to the top. They kept thinking, okay, if we acquire enough, if we print enough money, if we write enough checks, we'll eventually take over. Now, nah, see, now, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So now I'm about to call a cap on that. Because ain't this what you ponies wanted? Y'all said, oh, I would like Xbox if, you know, they would be a little bit more competitive. I don't understand why Microsoft has all this money and they don't do nothing with it. And now that Microsoft's doing something with it, now you ponies are upset. And this is why Phil Spencer said you people weren't going to buy his platform anyway. Y'all a bunch of haters. You don't actually care about gaming. You people love the plastic box more than the games that you're playing. It's clearly it is pretty evident and obvious to me because it's not a real gamer alive that I know that be hating on Xbox in regards to the type of games they got coming out. Okay? Do Game Pass, and if you want to buy them, go out there and choose to buy them if you want. You people are just complaining about nothing now at this point. Hey, it is what it is. A big chunk of the ecosystem. Microsoft owns a huge chunk of all the studios in existence. It's weird to think about it, but like Microsoft has bought so much. Xbox, Game Studios, Activision, Blizzard, all the little tiny stuff like three people are pointing out the fact that this is an overly complicated overhaul and all of this is just going to be bad. I don't of think course, anybody is Xbox. celebrating this. I don't think anybody is saying I this. am. We, we, I'm waiting for Sega. <laughs> thing, but hey, Microsoft, hey, you can make Game Pass Ultimate to $25 a month if you get Sega on board. <laughs> I think it's bizarre to me the people that are saying, this is good for the road ahead. Woo, it's perfect, baby. Gears E-Day, avoid self of midnight, baby. Man, you know, we're Indiana Jones, Blade, you know what I'm saying? And now if we get Square or Sega, we'll have access to those games on Game Pass. You know I mean? But you ain't going to have to pay five more dollars for that. We don't care. <laughs> we having fun, baby. <laughs> this pony coming over here talking about he, he all going to be paying a little bit. I'm a grown man. <laughs> I can pay for anything. <laughs> I decided to go to the Xbox subreddit last night, and there were a lot of people saying, okay, this sucks, but I'm optimistic this means that more games are coming. And I must admit I find this funny, that you're getting robbed, and you're saying— How oh, are you getting robbed? 
You pay for said service and you get access to said service. How are you getting robbed? Explain to me how you're getting robbed when you're paying for the games. Through the- so let me ask you this. So was people getting robbed when they used to rent their games at Blockbuster? Were people getting robbed when they used to rent their movies and games at Hollywood Video? Were they getting robbed then or are you only getting robbed at Microsoft? Because I can guarantee you, you was probably spending more money on Blockbuster at that time. Remember, guys, eight, nine, ten dollars type of stuff to rent a game for five days. Didn't get access to all the games like what you're getting with Microsoft, including day and dates. Okay, day and dates where things are way more expensive than they have ever been. Think about it. Think about what I'm saying. Without no late fees. Oh, you know, let me rent out this blockbuster game for five days for twelve ninety nine. Five days, especially around those times, that was expensive. Now you got a service that gives you $20, access to 300 games, day and date games as soon as they come out for you to play. And now there's a problem? Bro, that was back in the 90s. We in 2024. That is some pretty good inflation. Okay, I hope that money goes to a good space. And then you can share it too? You couldn't share an N64 game with your cousin. If he was playing Pokemon Stadium all day, you had to wait. (laughs) Game Pass has killed Xbox. It's That's killed. what you want to believe. And I'm sitting here telling y'all it did it. Killed their profits. It's killed their fan base. It's killed their ownership. It's killed the collecting vibe. It, it's just killed it. It's not the best deal in gaming. And I don't think we should call it that anymore. It is. But, it is the best deal in gaming. And this video is going to have the game's to seal of approval. And you don't even know what you're talking about. Like I said, I'll break it down for y'all one more time for the ponies in the back. If I if I want to play this game with my wife, that's seventy dollars each person, bro. Just for two games, man. Y'all say, well, okay, like I, I mean, unless you don't have nobody, unless you don't have, a, I don't know, family, whatever the situation. Unless you don't talk to a lot of people, explain to me how I'm saving more money. I bought I buy a game seventy dollars for my wife, seventy dollars for that's one hundred and fifty dollars right there. I probably mean we like to buy probably two games every year. So that means that we spent $300 on two games that are exactly the same of each other. Oh, you can sell it. You can do all these other things. But then I but then I would have had access to Gears E Day, South of Midnight, Indiana Jones, Blade. You know, you guys keep saying that because at the end of the tank at the end of the day, time is very precious to people. You don't even own your life, bro. Like all you people talking about all these physical collections, man, guess what? You're not going to have it when your time is up. So all these people collecting. Oh, look at me. I'm collecting these thousand dollar games. Look at me. Guess what? You don't actually own it because guess what? When you finally go away, who you think is getting your games? That's why it's a hobby for people. That's why I try to tell people, enjoy gaming. Y'all want to sit there and talk about ownership. Oh, we own our games. Bro, you don't even own your life, man. Even God owns your life. What are you talking about, bro? Your body ain't nothing but a, a temple. That's all it is, man. Your soul is one is the one that's immortal, not the flesh that you live in. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video, man. Actually, let me hear what you got to say. Bro. These have just been some off the cuff. All right, now we're done. All right, have, have a good one, guys. And like I said, take care. Peace.